Welcome to Your Vertical Home. tuning in today. Until I see you again, I bless you. Amen? Amen. (laughs) Bye-bye. Hi, y'all. Welcome to the Vertical Hope Show. I'm Michelle Davenport, your host. I have started this six Uh, part series on God use me to be an answer to somebody else's prayer and woo are you in store for some good stories how God has used me in different situations uh, as I pray this prayer I'm telling you what you will be blessed and inspired to pray it yourself okay so this is the second part of the six part series if you miss the first part go back go back and watch it uh, because it will bless you and it also kind of leads into this second one now you'll get something out of the second one but you should go watch the first one because I'm telling you it's going to be a blessing to your soul amen amen I'm high I'm highlighting different stories through each episode it's just all about bringing that vertical hope to this horizontal world right it's bringing vertical hope vertical God God's hope right to a horizontal world and so today I want to tell you a story that how God used me to be an answer to somebody else's prayer once again several years ago we put our house not this house (laughs) and we put our our old house up for sale and uh, we had some lookers we had some potential buyers we had people uh, you know come in and want to schedule appointments and anybody sold a house you know that can be a nightmare everything's got to be in perfect place we had four dogs at the time and two well three of them lived in the house one bird dog outside and you had to gather up all the dogs and go sit at a park or a friend's house that would let you come with three dogs and let people come in and view your house you just know it's it's a lot of work for for you to to have your house up for sale amen anybody's out there done it you know so anyway this went on for about a month and we had a cash offer but what i haven't told you is with this cash offer me and my husband every time we go to buy a house or sell a house what we would do is pray and we'll go separately and pray and then come back and i'll write down a number and then he writes down a number and we show each other and it matches the number always matches and this house was no exception so when we went to sell it we prayed about how much what is the least what is the price we're supposed to accept for this house we had a number that we believe god gave us spoke to both of us and so she was about two thousand shy on her cash offer so we went back to her and told her nope this is what you know this is final this is what we want she went back offered a little less or a little more but not the two thousand anyway back and forth and it just became um a problem because uh she wasn't going to go up to the 2000 and we weren't coming down so she ended up walking away she just said well if they won't meet me right here then we're going to walk away and i think it ended up being like 500 uh where we were back and forth and we just would not well we weren't back and forth (laughs) because we stayed firm but um she didn't understand it but listen for us to obey god was more important than this cash offer even though a cash offer is like almost unheard of really and so in my arena of people <laughs> so anyway um she walked and so we said you know what we know we heard god this must not be the timing we took the house off the market we did some upgrades to the home we thought well we'll just make this our forever home i really wanted an in-ground pool and we really wanted to downsize a little and so we knew that our kids were you know getting, getting married and grandkids were coming and we just didn't think we may need all the space you know so we put that to rest did some i had a fireplace added had a uh, hot tub add in a new po- uh, new back deck and all this jazz and so several i don't know how long it was i'd like to say a year later my husband was on realestate.com um, even after we did this work and you know hindsight's 2020 uh we still just wanted to move or at least i did okay and so uh, my husband was on realestate.com and he seen this house in an area in a city we weren't really looking in and he said let's go see this house today well you know we're not actively working with a realtor because our house is not on the market so we go out there and we look at this house and oh my gosh y'all the outside was so awesome i mean it had i think it had a little 
little acreage with it if i'm not mistaken or at least an acre it had a koi pond um uh it had a screamed in uh, back porch with a fireplace and a tv it just and the, the whole outside was just immaculate we absolutely fell in love with it we came inside and the inside was beautiful the only thing we didn't like is it had really steep stairs and all the bedrooms are upstairs and we were truly looking for a house when we were looking for a house is the master to be on the first floor and then any other bedrooms could be anywhere but we wanted ours on the first floor right okay so that was the downside to that. So anyway, as we go about, we're looking and uh, I meet the realtor of that selling the house. And, and and my husband said, let's put in an offer. And I'm like, we haven't even got our house up for sale. And we didn't have that great experience when we did put it up for sale. He said, let's just make an offer. So we went ahead and made an offer and praise the Lord, it got turned down. <laughs> but when I was talking to the realtor, um, I said, well, we want to make an offer. And she goes, okay, we'll call your real estate lady and let's work on that. And so I called my real estate lady and she says, I am so sorry, but we have a family emergency and I'm not selling homes at all right now. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. And then I told the realtor that was selling this house, I don't actually have a realtor now. She's unavailable. She said, well, I'll be your, I'll be your realtor. <laughs> I said, okay. And so she put in the offer. And again, once again, I told you already, you know, they got turned down. And so clearly it wasn't the place that we needed to be living or the city that God wanted us to be in. So, um, but we decided then, since we'd already found a house that we were super excited about, that maybe now it's time to put the house back on the market using the new real estate lady. And so she comes over and does a walk through through my house and puts a for sale sign in our front yard. And she says, I'm gonna come back in a few days. I'm gonna bring my lady that will give you, she's gonna walk, I forgot what their name's called, but anyway, they're kind of like designers, but they come in and they uh, prep your house, prepare it for to sell. And so <laughs> some of you are already probably hollering at the screen right now and telling me the name, but sorry, can't hear you. <laughs> so. Um, I'll think of it while I'm while I'm talking about it. So anyway, uh, she went at home staging. <laughs> She's a home stager. I already thought about it. So she came. I met with her and she came in. She wanted to home um, stage my house, and so I agreed with a couple of things. But honestly, we were crammed pretty big in that house, and uh, I just told her. I said I'll do a couple of these things, but honestly, I think I just have a good feeling. I think my house is going to sell. I don't think I have to put furniture in storage and do all the things, you know. And um, she said, okay, well, um, my realtor, Stace, uh, Stephanie, she came back several days later and we signed some paperwork. And as I was getting ready to walk her out the front door, we stopped in the foyer and we started talking. She started sharing some stuff about her life and uh, I started sharing some stuff about my life, y'all. And I told her about this book I had written uh, my first book. Uh, book ripened on the vine my testimony I told her how it was going to become a movie and um, she was so excited and anything anyway one thing led to another and I started telling her about a class um, I can't remember how we got on the subject of me teaching remembering the forgotten God by Francis Chan but we got on this subject and so then I started telling her about how we had um, we had decided our last class that we're going to use what we learned in the class and we're going to take it to the streets. I mean, letting the whole, the, the class was all about the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit and praying that he leads you and directs your footsteps every single day and just using you in a powerful way and getting outside your comfort and outside your box and really letting him lead your path. So we prayed in our last class and we really felt like the Lord wanted us to go to the hospital and go to the ICU and go pray for all the people. So this is part of the first part of the first series, but it's not the whole story. And so we went and God just divided us all. We thought we'd all stick together, but God had different plans. We all went different directions, prayed over people. Um, I really had a heart for people that didn't have many visitors. So that's the people I wanted to go pray for. So anyway, when we left, um, I said, let's get hamburgers and let's go feed the hungry. Let's not end our night yet. And so we did, we looked for them, but we couldn't find any. So I said, you know what? I've got plenty by where I live. <laughs> and so uh, the homeless and the hungry. And so I took off and I left. And so I'm telling her the story and I get to the part where this motorcycle man had passed me and his red bandana had came off. And 
I thought, well, if he stops, if I see this motorcycle break, I'll stop and grab it because it's safer for me to jump out of my car. It was kind of late at night. There was hardly any traffic on this road. It wasn't a highway, you know, so I don't get upset that I, that I was going to get out of my car. But I never seen him stop. So I thought, well, if it's not important to him, I'm certainly not going to stop my car and get it. And so I come up over the hill and when I came down and I'm telling Stephanie the story. And as I'm telling her the story, y'all, her eyes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm thinking they're, that she's about to cry. And I'm just thinking, wow, this story is touching this, this woman that I barely know. This is touching her heart. And I tell her I come up over this hill and I had I seen my, uh, my motorcycle man and he had T-bowed in a truck. And that's where I stopped the story. And she just goes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're her, you're her. And I'm like, her? And she said, yeah, you're her. <laughs> Look, I've, got, I've, I've not even used my notes. So I have no idea where I'm at. She says, you're her, you're the woman. And I said, the woman, she goes, yes. She goes, the man that you prayed over, that motorcycle man, that person that you prayed over, that was my best friend's dad. And they told me that this woman had done this. And she goes, oh my gosh. And so we're both crying now. And we're, I'm starting to have a God story. And, and, uh, and we're starting to connect on, this, on, the, on, on God, you know. And she's really like, you know, I really want to get back in touch with the Lord. And I really want to, you know, just, you know, spend some more time with Him. And uh, just develop that relationship. And so we are growing a bond right here in the foyer, y'all. And we are, we are uh, sharing Jesus with each other and sharing this story. Now listen, listen, I have no idea where I'm at on my notes, but I know where I'm at in my heart right now. Listen here, y'all. God himself orchestrated this. Because listen, there's a few facts here that we need to reminisce over. Number one, we weren't looking for a house. Number two, our house wasn't even on the market anymore. Number three, we, we went clear 35 minutes away from where we live and where we were looking to look at a house when we weren't even planning on selling our house at that moment, to look at a house at, in an area we never discussed about living. So we went there and God, it was a divine appointment that I would meet Stephanie. That was by design, by God, that I, it was, another thing, my realtor, I had no idea that she had a family emergency. She wasn't selling houses. I call her to help me. She can't, so Stephanie steps in. All of this, me and Stephanie, we have no idea who each other, who we are. Uh, we just met at this home, but we did not know what God was gonna do. We had no idea he was developing a friendship here. We had no idea that this was a divine appointment by God, but God knew. And he knew that we would be standing in the foyer that day, and I'd be talking about uh, the motorcycle man. And I'd be discussing this with her. And he knew we were going to have this connection. And he knew that Stephanie needed this connection. And that she was wanting and desiring to have a closer relationship with God, y'all. So God, God did all of that. He orchestrated every bit of our footsteps. He knew we weren't going to buy that house. And you know what? She put our house up for sale. And we became... we. We were becoming friends, you know, she'd come over, we'd talk, we'd text, we, you know, I'd share more God stories and we just, and now she's just so busy, we hardly have time. But I tell you what, I could call her up right now and she'd say, where do you want to meet for coffee? I mean, we have that connection now that no time apart will ever, uh, you know, disrupt that friendship. We have made a connection and we did meet for coffee several times after we sold the house. But listen. She put my house up for sale, and the first day she showed it, we had an offer, and we sold our house. And do you know what, y'all? We sold, these are, these are quite a few praise reports in this one, you know, God used me to be an answer. We sold our house for almost double for what she, that lady, that cash offer was a year later. The market had, was good, interest rates were low, and we sold that house for double, y'all. We walked away with double in our pocket than what we would have had we sold the house, had we wavered on what God told us to stay steady on, had we said, oh, it's only $500, let's do it, let's sell it, we would have lost out on double. God blessed us and we were able to put pay cash for that pool, to put that pool in and we did think that we downsized it because actually, listen, this is a funny story and then I'll get back to Stephanie. This is a side note. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, we moved into this house and I had a garage, and they brought everything in and it was like 11 o'clock at night and they're like, where do you want this? Where do you want that? And I'm telling you what, y'all, I'm overwhelmed. It's just like, it's been a day. We got here, this whole house was, it's a whole video in itself, you know? 
And so we got here and the man hadn't even finished moving out. He still had food in the refrigerator, liquor in the cabinets. All the stuff that he did to remodel this house was, was down in the basement. All kinds of trash, garbage. I mean, it was a nightmare. And we had the painters come in during all this and we had to get him to get over here and finish, uh, finish moving out. And it was just crazy crazy what God did, but I'm telling you what, it was such a God move. This was such a God house, but I felt like we, when we bought the house, it said 1900 square feet, right? And we were moving from 2,900 square feet. So we were like bragging how we were downsizing and, but we were going to have outdoor, you know, space and a, in, a, in ground pool. And we were going to, you know, build this deck and all this stuff, you know, so we're like bragging on all this, you know, we downsized good for us, you know, but our outside area is going to be so much better and bigger and for all the grandkids and kids. And so anyway, we're real happy. And I have a garage full of stuff and family. I just said, stop, stop. Cause I have nowhere. I mean, we have used the storage. We have put furniture in all these rooms and I'm saying stop we have no more room and so I called the church that we were a part of at the time and I said bring your trailer come haul off all this stuff we cannot get it in our house it's too small about uh, we had so much trouble y'all about three months we lived here for three months before one day because these are all cathedral ceilings in the bedroom here everywhere it's three levels we've got three masonry fireplaces all wood burning and we're laying in our bedroom which has a king size bed a tv a huge i think it's a seven no it, it's probably a 10 foot church pew on one wall a fireplace to a dresser i mean and we have so much room still in this bedroom and we're laying there one night and i'm looking around and i said you know what this house seems so much bigger than 1900 square feet so i'm texting my friend stephanie and i said hey this house seems so much bigger than 1,900 square feet. And she texts me back <laughs> within a few minutes. She goes, Michelle, I don't know what was on, um, you know, the layout of the house and on the description and the square footage and all that. She said, but it was only listed at 1,900 square feet. But she said, Michelle, that is only upstairs. She says, your actual house is over 2,800 square feet, almost 2,900 square feet. And so we actually did not downsize. But because we were so distracted about all the things that went wrong when we moved in this house and we had to fix and, and construction that we were causing that we wanted to happen, like put a pool in um, and put a fence in and just all kinds of things, we were distracted by all the things that we didn't even recognize it until three months later that this house was huge <laughs> and it, it even seemed bigger with the cathedral, cathedral ceilings, you know? And so that's just a side note. But anyway, what a blessing though. I mean, now we have five grandkids and so thank God we do have a bigger house um, and that we didn't go to only 1900 square feet. So because all the events we hold here. But anyway, being an answer to somebody else's prayer. God used me to be an answer. You know, Stephanie needed that conversation. I don't know who was praying for Stephanie to have that conversation with me, but I know somebody must have, or maybe even Stephanie herself. I've never even asked. But to have that God moment, that God connection, where she really heard the power of God move. For she really could experience the not only, but in such a personal way, y'all. It was her best friend's dad that that uh that that happened to that night and such a personal testimony for her to meet me just god or and even the testimony how god weaved our lives together what an awesome way that god brought us together to be an answer to somebody else's prayer amen and i mean even if it was nothing but my own prayer that god he's answering my being an answer to my personal prayer prayer god use me use me to be an answer and my, and my prayer, he's, he may have even answered my own prayer. My prayer is to lead me to those who really want to experience God. Lead me to the ones that really want to have a relationship with Him and use my life to encourage that and to impart hope. And I believe God did that that day. Amen. Well, you know what? This is, a, <laughs> this is your vertical hope. And I am so glad that you took the time to sit with me today and watch the show because I have more stories to tell. This is only episode two. We got three coming at you soon, so stay tuned. And uh, I never want to leave you without telling you this. I bless you. Okay? I'll talk to you later. Bye. 
I just thank you for tuning in to your vertical hope for the day. And as always, go out there and be willing to be an answer to somebody else's prayer. Why? Because it will change you. Not only them, but you. All right, until we see each other again, I bless you. Bye-bye.